Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and I'm in a brand new 1.2.5 test world, spotlighting a very different mod from what I'm used to doing. This is kind of a total conversion mod. It's uh, going to completely change the way Minecraft works, and you're about to see all the complexities of Terra Firmacraft. Terra Firmacraft is uh, created by Biox. Uh, you can get the link to this mod in the description of this video, as usual. And you'll see that Terra Firmacraft really changes the scope of the game. Things are very different. You can kind of see me hanging out with a, uh, you know, a big swamp area right here. Things look a little bit different. It has its own custom texture pack it comes with. And there's a bunch of different stuff going on. So why don't I get started showing you guys Terra Firmacraft. All right, like I said, Terra Firmacraft will completely change a lot of the aspects of Minecraft. It's only in beta right now, so if you want to check it out right now, you can go download it, but uh, there's a lot more to come. And a lot of what you're familiar with in Minecraft, you're going to want to throw out the window because uh, things are different. Let's see how we want to start off in the world. You might be noticing this little thing down here that might look like a redstone button, but it's not. If you harvest it, it actually comes up into the world as flint. Okie dokie then, that's cool. Uh, let's go over to one of our trees. Normally we start off the world by punching trees. All right, I'm just gonna punch this little tree down here. Okay, very different. First off, we didn't get the leaves. They disappeared immediately when I broke the tree. And second off, I got all these pieces of uh, birch tree wood, um, but it's not the standard type of wood that you're used to seeing. Um, and if you try and combine these wood pieces to get sticks, you're going to find out that you can't. The proper way to get sticks is actually to harvest and get yourself uh, chopping up on some of the leaves. Leaves have a chance to drop sticks. It's not 100%. Um, and they have a very low chance to drop the saplings that are required to grow the next level of tree. Um, so you can see the sticks are pretty common, but not 100%. Cool. Um, what you can do with your sticks is combine them with a piece of flint, like so, to get yourself a flint tool. This is the earliest version of a tool, um, and it's probably like the weakest and worst of the tools. But with that, you can start harvesting more trees a little bit faster than just punching them. Let's go find this other willow tree here. This is a willow tree, as opposed to the birch tree. And you can see they have a lot more wood, uh, loads and loads of wood that comes falling down on top of you. Uh, yeah, look at all that good stuff. You'll also notice that it only stacks up to four. So uh, if you are starting to say, uh, Dire, this is looking like a little bit harder game than we're used to in the regular vanilla Minecraft, you are correct. Terra Firmacraft makes things a lot harder on you guys. It will not be as easy as you're used to. So uh, be prepared for a mod that really will test your skill. Uh, there's a lot of complexity in this mod as well. I'm going to grab myself a couple reeds while I'm here, and I'm probably going to need some more of this flint. So why don't I uh, run around and collect some more flint for a few minutes, and I'll be right back. Okay, so your flint tool is all well and good, and um, you might be saying to yourself, all right, I guess the next thing I might need is a crafting table, right? And you are correct. Crafting tables are built the same way that they were built before, but you do not get wood the way you're used to. Nobody can take a simple piece of wood and convert it into a wooden plank by hand. You need a tool, and for that, you're going to need a flint tool. But remember, like I said, the flint tool is the weakest of the tools, and... Uh, after only one use, it's going to go ahead and disappear on you. So uh, you're going to have to go ahead and craft four flint tools to get yourself four pieces of wood. You might also notice that the planks are specific to the willow tree, so you're getting willow planks here. Cool. Looking good so far. So now that I've got my four willow planks, I can craft myself a crafting table, which is great because a lot of the vanilla stone tools still exist. However, we don't have any stone in our inventory. We're going to need another piece of flint, and we're going to go have to get some cobblestone using our flint tool. Let's go do that now, and I'll get some of this wood out of here as well. So I happen to be sitting right next to a nice area where I've got some stone hanging out down here. Grab my flint tool and start picking this stuff up. And you'll see that this isn't regular cobblestone, it's good nice cobblestone. I think that's pronounced nice. Um, and you guys know how good I am at pronouncing things. So uh, I got myself some nice cobblestone. Nice. And uh, harvesting along here, you might also be noticing some different colored dirt. Um, it's mostly all called dirt, but this one looks like it's peat, so that's cool. I think we're in a swamp area, so that's why we're getting peat here. Good stuff. Um, why don't I head back to my crafting table that I made and go ahead and craft up some of the stone tools. Most of the stone tools still work, 
and uh, you can go ahead and craft them up like so. So hooray, I've got myself a stone pickaxe. Might as well get myself a stone shovel while I'm at it. Cool. Um, I could go ahead and mine for a little bit, and you'll find that there's a ton, a ton of different stone in the game. Uh, if we go ahead and look at stone, you'll see just how many there are. Uh, let's actually look up cobblestone, because that'll probably be the clearest way to tell you. Um, you've got granite, diorite, gabbro, siltstone, mudstone, shale, and yada, 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 yada. All kinds of different types of cobblestone, and they're broken up into a couple of different categories. There is four categories of stone, igneous intrusive, igneous extrusive, metamorphic, and sedimentary. And each of them uh, of the four types of rock, so uh, let's say uh, if we're looking at igneous intrusive, that's granite and uh, diorite and gabbro. And if you're looking at igneous extrusive, that's going to be uh, andesite and basalt which I think is over here, and Daysite, which I don't know where it's at, but you get the point. So there's a couple different types of stone, and I'll get more into them in a little bit, but basically um, certain types of stone can be used for certain things, but not all things. Um, another thing you'll quickly learn about Terra Firma Craft is that most types of dirt uh, will not go ahead and... Uh, hover in the air like it normally does. Grass still will, but dirt will not. So if I go ahead and harvest this dirt down here, um, you'll see, looks like peat will still hover in the air, so that's cool. Why don't I find some real dirt, like this piece right here? Note that dirt is still affected by gravity, unlike in vanilla Minecraft. So there's a couple different types of dirt. Um, and you can see it being affected by gravity. And the same is said for cobblestone. Regular stone will not be affected by gravity, um, but there is the possibility for cave-ins, and I'll get to those in a little bit as well. But cobblestone, also affected by gravity. So uh, keep that in mind as you're considering building a cobblestone 9x9 house. Oh my. So if your head is not yet spinning, you're doing pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and use the power of NEI here to help myself out and just grab a few more sticks. I'm going to grab just a handful here. Uh, we're going to need a good amount. And uh, to get started up next in Terra Firma Craft, you're probably going to want to go ahead and start a fire. And the way to do that is you're going to need to craft a fire starter. Makes sense. You rub a couple sticks together and you get fire. Um, a good clean way to get sticks is to take three pieces of sticks and throw them on the ground. One, two, three. And right click with your fire starter. Hey, it didn't work. Well, except for the fact that the sticks came back into my inventory. All right, there we go, it worked. Now it's not 100% chance, so uh, keep that in mind. And when you right click on your little fire pit here, you can see this inventory section, and it's a little confusing possibly at first, but don't worry, it's pretty straightforward. So unlike in vanilla Minecraft, fire does not burn forever. And you can see this little progress bar, the fire is already starting to get cooler. This is the heat level of the fire right here. The left slot is where you give it more fuel. Fuel, of course, in the type of um, wood or peat. So I can go ahead and place some wood in here and you can see that the first piece I used immediately got used up and it started to raise the level of the fire. The next four pieces won't be used at all until that one piece that I just placed in there gets burned up. It'll grab from the bottom and the stack will fall down. Once it runs out of wood, the fire will start to cool off until it finally goes out. At which point you're going to have to place more wood in there and use the fire starter on this little pit here to get the fire started back up. Um, in order to use the fire pit, you're going to have to use it to craft a bunch of different things. Uh, first off, we can use torches. Um, to get torches, it's no longer a piece of coal and a stick. Uh, you actually have to heat up your sticks in the fire. Uh, to do that, you place a stick in the top slot here. And I just want to grab one for a moment because I want you guys to also see the fundamentals of how heating things up in Terra Firma Craft works. It's not immediate. Um, Sticks are pretty quick, so watch this real fast. Note that the stick goes up through a couple different levels of heat. It moved by pretty quick there, but then we get a torch. We get two torches per stick, and it heats up real fast and becomes another torch. Torches are made from sticks, and it's very quick, but uh, other things take a little bit longer. For example, if I was to get some beef, which I won't bother looking for a cow right now, I'll just go ahead and place my raw beef in the fire. Note that it starts off warm, and then builds up to hot. Dun, 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 dun. And then becomes red. These are the different levels of heat 
of an item. And typically most items are not fully complete until they drop from this top slot into the bottom slot here. And there's two output slots, so you can cook one item and then the next item. And once it goes from brilliant white, it goes down and becomes a edible piece of steak. Now you cannot place a whole stack of items in here. I just left clicked, but only one item went in. And I can't place more um, items in and then one at a time. So you can't go throw a whole stack of items in and um, you know walk away. So you're gonna have to do one item at a time. Not quite as much automation as available in the vanilla Minecraft. But like I said, things are getting harder when you're using Terraformacraft. It's a little bit more realistic, but uh, really pretty cool. So now that I've got a little bit of food and uh, some torches, but just a few, I could go mining through the earth. Um, now I could do that right now, but I'm gonna actually head over to a spot, thanks to the powers of creative mode flight, where I've mined before. And I'll give you the opportunity to see a lot of the different ores and types of rocks available in the world. Now you'll see some uh, buildings that I've made down there. Don't worry about those yet, I'll get to them. But here's an example of a burned out fire. I didn't give it any more wood, and uh, the fire has completely died down and it's completely off right now. I can throw more wood in, but it's not going to start back up until I right click on it with the fire starter. And then the heat level will rise. Cool. Uh, going down into the earth here, you can see a bunch of different types of stone that I've run into. Here's some basalt. And of course I'm in creative mode, which is not going to help. So there's some basalt cobblestone um, and a bunch of different types of stone here as well. Uh, I've got some diorite, and I've got some nice. Going down further into some areas that I've been able to mine through. You can see there's a bunch of different types of rock. Uh, this is schist. And this reddish rock here is siltstone. And then you can start finding some cool ores. You can find this stuff. Um, which I forget exactly what that is, and I think I'm going to need a, another type of pickaxe for that. So why don't I just get a diamond to cheat my way through this. Alright, that is a piece of kaolinite. So there's a bunch of different um, types of ores available in the game, as well as different types of rocks. Let me find them for you now. So here we go. You can see there's copper and gold and platinum and hematite and malachite and garnicerite and bismuth and all this other cool crazy stuff and uh, all the different ores have different types of qualities in them and they can be melted down and into different types of metal. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of different types of tools here made from different types of metals and uh, different metals have different properties and I'll kind of get into that in the future but it's a pretty complicated system that needs to be really fleshed out and I'm trying to do a quick spotlight on this just so you guys have an idea of how terra firma craft works. Now if I were to harvest up a few more pieces of kaolinite um, and over here we had some more kaolinite so that's cool. Um, what else did we have? This stuff here. More kaolinite? Awesome. And uh, there's a bunch of different types of ores down here. Now, uh, one of the items you can make is called the Prospector's Pick. And that is a pretty cool item. You can see there's a bunch of different versions of it, but I'm going to go with the Stone Prospector's Pick, which is crafted pretty much like a pickaxe, but with one more piece of cobblestone. And what this guy does is he kind of indicates in what direction you should mine by right-clicking on a block. And uh, you can see there's nothing of interest down that way. Um, and you might find some samples of different types of ores by uh, right-clicking and finding out what's down there. And you can see there's different amounts that it'll tell you, very large sample um, versus uh, small samples. And uh, there's a whole section on the prospecting pick on the uh, Wikipedia entry here for Terra Firma Craft. The prospecting pick will scan a 25 by 25 by 13, so 25 blocks horizontal and 13 vertical, on the block that you select. And uh, it'll kind of indicate what amounts of ore are in front of you, but it's a big area that it's scanning and it's really not giving you a huge amount of detail on where it's at, but it will give you an indication of where a good spot to mine is. So that's the prospecting pick and a bunch of different types of ores and rocks available in Terra Firma Craft. Now you might have noted that I wasn't able to break those uh, awesome ores that I found down there with a stone pickaxe. Some ores you can break with a stone pickaxe, of course. There's a small list, but you're going to need to upgrade to better types of pickaxes and better types of tools above stone, of course, right? So for that, we're going to need to cook up some metals. 
and I'll show you how to get into metallurgy, which is probably where you're going to want to move to after you've gotten past these Stone Age tools. All right, so in order to get into metallurgy, we're going to need some charcoal. Uh, you can find coal underground, I believe, still, um, but you're going to probably want some charcoal, and the best way to do that is not simply taking a piece of wood and throwing it into a furnace like you might be used to with the vanilla Minecraft. You're going to have to do a little bit of work to get yourself some charcoal. Um, according to uh, the creator of this mod on the wiki post there, he tells you that the way they made charcoal back in the day was to make a huge bonfire out of wood, and cover it up with dirt so that none of the smoke could escape and that's how you would turn wood into charcoal and you're gonna have to do something pretty similar in terra firma craft um, now you might discover after playing around with your uh, logs here that you can right click them on the ground and what that does is place down a pile of logs and you can keep right clicking on that pile and I'll put three pieces in there, one that I initially placed down and two more clicks. And if you right click on this little pile of wood here with a non piece of wood, uh, you can see it's a log pile and you can store four types of logs, all different sets in the log pile. So if you want to store, you know, four stacks of wood right there, perfect. You just were able to store four stacks of wood in one block. Great. Looking cool so far. Um, and if you were tired of, uh, you know, dealing with all this inventory taken up with all the logs, you could just throw it in there like so. And, uh, you know, you can fill up your log piles. Looking good so far. And of course you can take out of the log pile, and once you take the last item out, it's going to uh, remove the log pile altogether. How cool is that? Very cool. And log piles are how you're going to go ahead and create yourself some charcoal. In order to do that, I'm going to clean up my inventory and be right back. Okay, to get started, the first thing you're going to want to do is place down three by three with a hole open in the middle, wood piles. Now, the more wood you have in your wood piles, the better off you're going to be. So if you fill this wood pile up all the way, you're in better shape. Um, but if you don't fill it up all the way, it'll still work. But um, you're not going to have as much charcoal produced after uh, this cycle completes. And, uh, you know, depending on how much charcoal you're looking to get, you might want to do it because it takes a while for this to complete. And I'll get into the timing of it in a moment. But uh, just keep in mind that the more wood that you put in your log piles, each individual one, the more charcoal you're going to produce in the end. Um, so let me get myself some more wood. I'm, I'm going to go with uh, just maple wood because that's one I remember off the top of my head. Uh, thank you, NEI. Uh, of course, you could go harvest it out in the wild the proper way, but this is a mod spotlight. You guys don't want to see me harvesting forever. Uh, once you've placed down your 3x3 three three pile of uh, wood around like this with an open spot in the middle, you're going to want to place down some dirt on the outer edges, pretty much like this. And it's okay if the dirt converts over to grass. That's not a big deal. Okay, cool. Now, if you didn't fill up your wood pile, you won't be able to right click on the top without placing a piece of wood inside said wood pile. So uh, what you can do is just place it like so by right clicking on the dirt there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill up some more dirt on the sides here. You're going to need it anyway. And what you want to do once you've crafted your 3x3 three three area with an open spot in the middle, you're going to want to put another 3x3 three three without an open spot on the top. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and lay out the dirt like so to get you started. So let's get our wood and place them into piles like so. And remember, all these piles are empty that I'm doing right now, so it's going to be a small amount of uh, wood that we get out of this. Why don't I fill it up since I was able to uh, give myself some uh, wood with any eye after all. I'll fill a few of them up, but not all of them. Just whatever maple I might have left in my inventory here. Cool. Looks good to me. Um, in the very center here, we're going to want to start another little fire pit. So why don't I get my sticks and throw one, two, three in there and start right clicking on them with my fire starter until I actually manage to start the fire. And I'm going to make sure this fire is nice and hot by throwing some uh, maple wood in there. Any type of wood will do, of course. And then finally, what I want to do is right click and cover this guy up. But I want to also cover the top of these blocks up with dirt. Because like I said, you need to cover everything with dirt. And it's a good idea to put your dirt on top first, and you'll see why in a minute. 
Uh, the last piece of wood will go down right here on top of your pit for a completely covered area. And then the last piece of dirt to completely cover your entire area with dirt. Um, if you've done this right, your dirt should start smoking in a few moments here. Let's see what happens. Hey, there we go. The dirt is smoking. Now you have to wait about 18 hours in Minecraft time. Not real life time, so don't worry. You don't have to leave your computer idling overnight for this. Uh, you just have to wait about one Minecraft day. Um, and after said Minecraft day, your uh, smoking mound of dirt here should have some charcoal inside. And we'll come back to that later. Back to my fire pit. Now you guys might be looking at this fire pit and saying, all right, it's got this heat progress bar here going on. And uh, you've got this cool little thing where you have uh, all this different types of wood. Uh, what's the deal with all the different types of wood, Direwolf? Well, all the different types of wood have different properties when used in a um, fire pit like this. Um, there's a handful of different properties. Uh, the main ones are the burn length, in other words, uh, how long it lasts in the fire pit before another piece of wood is required, and the burn temperature, which is uh, how hot you can get your fire by using different types of wood. Uh, willow, for example, I believe is a pretty low burn temperature. So if you're using willow, it's gonna, you know, not get too hot. Um, but if you use something like I don't know, uh, birch, that's like a medium burn temperature. And uh, aspen wood is a pretty low burn temperature as well. And there's a wiki that shows you all the different temperatures and whatnot. Um, I'm gonna find a nice uh, high burn temperature. I'm gonna go with oak. Cool. So note the temperature right now, but if I throw some oak in there, once the willow is completely burned up and it moves on to the oak, the heat level of the fire will raise. And what that's going to allow you to do is uh, cook things uh, faster and to higher temperatures. So you can see by using oak, all of a sudden our heating temperature is going up. And I'm going to throw some more pieces of oak in there just to make sure this thing gets nice and hot. Um, now I could go with hickory if I wanted to. Why don't I check that stuff out? Because I believe hickory has a very high burning temperature. So let's get the oak out of there and throw some hickory in. Cool. Let's see how high that gets once it takes a piece. There we go. And you can see the heat level rising yet again. Cool. All right, so so far you guys have seen some of the major changes available in Terra Firma Craft. You've seen how to make charcoal by building this big complex structure out of wood and dirt. And you've seen the fact that trees act completely differently from what you're used to. The creation of sticks and uh, wooden planks is very different. And you've seen about the fire pit and how the uh, complex mechanics of the fire pit operate. Um, I want to show you guys another way to make wooden planks while I'm here before I forget that piece you can still make yourself a stone axe which is great for chopping down trees um, and you can combine your stone axe with a piece of uh, wood to get yourself some planks and you'll see that it only takes a bit of durability off the uh, axe and uh, the mod author can correct me if I'm wrong on this but different types of wood have different splitting difficulty um, maple I believe is harder to split so let's uh, find some maple I'll just grab a stack of that and see how easily I can split it. And easeability, I believe, is determined by how much of the durability will be lost when you split the wood. So keep that in the back of your mind as well. Now just a few more things to cover before I wrap up this part of the mod spotlight. I'm probably going to do this guy in two parts because like I said it's a pretty complex and majorly overwhelming mod but I hope I've been able to explain it clearly enough for you guys thus far. Uh, the next piece let's get into is metallurgy. Uh, it's a little complicated and it's not quite as easy as what you guys might be used to so let's figure out how to create metals and use them in terra firma craft. So as I showed you guys, there's a bunch of different types of uh, ores down in the earth, and when you harvest them, you get this stuff. Um, not raw ore like you would get in regular Minecraft, but little chunks of ores like so. And I picked cassiterite because it's one of the few ores that you can actually smelt in a fire pit. Not all ores can be smelted in a fire pit, and you're going to want your fire pit nice and hot, so make sure you have one of the higher heated... Um, 
pieces of wood available. So I'm going to use hickory, remember, because uh, that guy gets really hot. And to start off, you take that ore that you found underground there and just drop it into the top slot here of your fire pit. Now remember how long it took to cook meat. It's going to take a good amount of time to cook cassiterite. Um, it's going to work its way up to hot and then the red and orange and yellow stage up to white hot. And then once it gets to the white hot stage, it'll eventually move into liquid metal. And you'll see that happen in just a moment here. So clipped the video a little bit, skipped past the orange and red stages up to yellow and yellow white. Finally white, and uh, I believe right after that is brilliant white. And then we finally get our liquid metal. Now your unshaped tin is what you get out of cassiterite. So tin is the type of ore that contains the metal um, or I'm sorry, cassiterite is the ore that contains tin. And you get a little bit of slag on the side here as well. Now you might notice that there's a damage meter on the bottom of this. That indicates to you that your uh, liquid tin here is not a full amount of tin. You only get a little bit from it. So you're going to have to melt a second piece of cassiterite, leaving this unshaped tin down here. And let's come back after our cassiterite has heated up all the way. All right, we've gotten to the brilliant white stage, and when that last bit of heat attends in there, you can see that we get a fully piece of unshaped tin, and it's brilliant white, and it is still a liquid, so that's good. Now, if we leave it in there, it's going to stay in its liquid form, but if we take it out of the fire pit, it's going to start to cool off. Um, I'll take it out and place it on my inventory here, and in a few moments, you'll see it cool off from the liquid stage and go all the way back down from white to yellow to orange to red, etc., down to uh, completely cooled off. So there you can see now it's brilliant white, and then white, and it's going to cool off pretty quickly once it's out of the fire. If you want to heat it back up, it's pretty easy. Just place it back in the fire. Now it's down to yellow white, and now it's back up to white. There you go. And it'll heat up to brilliant white. And once it gets to the liquid stage again, it's going to drop down. There you go. And you can leave it in the bottom of this pit and it'll stay a liquid. So I'm going to leave it in there for the moment because I'm going to have to move on to the next piece of what we need to do for some metalworking. All right, in order to move on from metalworking, we're going to need an anvil. And an anvil, you can see there's a bunch of different types of anvils out there, but I'm going to get a stone anvil. And for that, we're going to need a special type of stone, gabbro, granite, diorite gabbro, granite, diorite. So those are the specific types of stone that we can use for creating an anvil. And if you remember, um, I believe those ones were the igneous intrusive. Granite, diorite, and gabbro, correct. So it's only igneous intrusive stones that you can use to create an anvil. Um, now you might be saying to yourself, all right, that looks like smoothish stone, not cobblestone, right? Now if we were to look up granite in our inventory here, you can see there's actually four types of granite. There is granite, which is the stuff you need to use to create your anvil. Uh, granite cobblestone, which is what you get when you harvest it. Granite bricks, which are created with a chisel, and I'll show you guys how to make chisels in a little bit, and smooth granite, which uh, I'm not entirely sure how to get, I'll be honest with you. So how do we get smooth granite, or like, you know, not the smooth granite, but this regular old vanilla granite, which is the stuff you would find in the ground? Uh, well, that's actually a little bit tricky. It's not terribly easy. Remember I told you guys that blocks were affected by gravity. Uh, well, we're going to have to exploit that to get ourselves some granite. And this is the proper way to do it. This isn't like exploiting the mod and the way it works. This is the way the mod tells you to get granite. Oh boy, I just had a cave -in. Oh my. Yep, uh, you can get cave -ins. And that happens occasionally. It's a lowest chance, but it does happen. Uh, if you're not careful with your cave -ins, you could get trapped under some rock. So be a little bit careful with that. So let's try this out a little bit higher here. And uh, there is a way to protect against cave -ins, and I'll tell you guys how to do that in a little bit. Um, so let's take this piece of stone right here and assume that's the one we're going to want to clear out and get ourselves a piece of smooth or regular old stone from. So what I'm going to do is harvest all the blocks around it. And finally, I'm going to harvest the block behind it and all the other rocks touching it. Ta-da! You can see that it dropped on the ground there and became a piece of gneiss. 
Not nice cobblestone, but nice. And you're going to need, you can't use nice for this. Um, that's another recipe there. So remember, it's not nice that you need. It's one of the other types of stone. So you're going to have to make sure to find that in the world and collect seven of them using that mechanic to get seven pieces of um, the diorite. So because I don't have any diorite handy and I'm doing a mod spotlight, not playing the game for real, I'm going to go ahead and use NEI to get myself some diorite and craft myself an anvil. Cool. Stone anvil. And uh, I'm going to go place it right next to this stone anvil that I was using earlier. And you can see it's a nice little anvil effect. And if you open up the interface, oh boy, lots of stuff going on. Don't worry, I'll explain it. So you actually have to work with your metals before you can actually use them, just like in kind of the real world. Um, so we've gone ahead and combined two pieces of cassiterite to get a full piece of brilliant white liquid. Good. And it's unshaped tin. So this type of metal is tin that we got from our cassiterite. And there is a uh, list on the Wikipedia, by the way, the wiki for TFCraft, um, showing you all the uh, different types of ore and what type of metal they will give you. Um, we're going to have to craft ourselves a hammer. And luckily we can use a stone hammer for this, but there's a bunch of other types. You just saw the recipe there. Um, there are some other hammers, of course. All kinds of good stuff. Um, but I did this stone hammer, which is the lowest tier of it. And for that you can use um, granite, diorite, or gabbro again. So specific types of uh, rocks that you can use for hammers. And the hammer goes in this bottom left slot down here. Ta-da! Um, now, the first thing you need to do to start working with metal is to get yourself an ingot. And your ingot's going to want to be nice and hot. You don't want it in the liquid stage. You want it somewhere between yellow and brilliant white. Um, but not liquid, because that's too hot. And no cooler than yellow, because that would not be good. When you place your... Um, metal in here, your unshaped tin, you'll see that first off this little progress bar moved over, the red one. And there's a rules section over here called, uh, right now it's told, final hit. Okay, so let's look at the way this works. Um, when you click on one of the red icons here on the left, you're going to increase the red to your line. Um, but remember, it can't be a liquid, so we have to wait a few minutes for this to cool off. Let's keep it in our inventory here, um, but it will cool in the slot up top as well. So let's give it a minute and I'll be right back once it's cooled off a bit. While I'm waiting for it to cool off, because I left it in the fire for a while, so I suspect it'll take a while for it to cool down to a brilliant white stage, I'll try and explain this. Um, the red buttons that you press down here will move the red progress bar to the right, and the green buttons will move the green progress bar over to the right. I believe. Uh, we'll see if I'm right on that in a moment. And uh, what you have to do is line up the red and the green marker and make them exactly parallel or on top of each other like so. Um, and once they are, you'll get your item out. When we're working with unshaped tin, we'll wind up getting a tin ingot. Um, and the rules section over here indicates um, there's certain rules you must follow in order to get the item that you want to come out. And in this case, the rule for unshaped tin turning into a tin ingot, is that the final blow that you give this thing has to be from the red column and it has to be a hit. So um, we can hit punch a few times and bend a few times and hit light and hit a few times to move these progress bars around, but the final one we have to click on has to be a red hit icon. And once you hit the red hit and it lines up with the green arrow, you'll get your item. So I'll be back in a moment once this brilliant white liquid has cooled off a bit. And while waiting for this brilliant white here, and looks like it worked, so now we're at the brilliant white stage. So let's click on the hit icon. You can see that the green arrow moves to the left. And if we hit the punch icon, the green arrow moves to the right. We're also losing some stone hammer uh, durability. So I was a little bit off. It's not the red one will never move. It's just red moves your green to the left, and green moves your green to the right. And you can see here, we want to get it perfectly lined up, um, which I just did, but it didn't work because remember, final has to be hit. So the last icon I have to do has to be the red one. And I can no longer click on it anymore because we've cooled down to the orange stage. So I have to get the um, unshaped tin out of here and get it back onto the fire. And I'm going to get myself some more hickory uh, to make sure this thing gets nice and hot. There we go. Let me get it back up to the white stage. 
And you can see it's noting that it's uh, been worked on just a little bit. I'm going to get it up to Brilliant White. There we go. Get it back onto the anvil. And uh, punch it a few times and give it a light hit. There we go. Uh, light hit lined up the items. And you can see as soon as I hit that light hit, I got myself a 10 ingot. Awesome. Now the 10 ingot is cool still and it's cooling down. It's all the way down to the yellow stage already. And I can start heating that guy up as well. Um, now the tin ingot, I can't actually use for anything in a direct crafting recipe. Uh, I could use it for a pickaxe and a shovel, um, and a hoe and, uh, an axe, so that'll work for me, but there's a couple other things we might want to use this tin for. Alright, so like I said, I can go ahead and create a, uh, you know, pickaxe or shovel using this tin ingot, just like so. Pretty cool. Uh, but there's some other items you might want to make. For example, that chisel. So let's take a look at the uh, tin chisel, which should be right here. Uh, for that, I'm going to need a tin chisel head. And I'm going to have to do a little bit more work with my anvil, but there's also another item I'm going to have to craft, and that is called the scribing table. And the scribing table is crafted with some wood, some planks, a piece of paper, and a feather. And you get yourself a scribing table here. And this guy is part of um, the anvil. Now you might have noticed I didn't use all the interfaces on the anvil just yet. Um, I've only used the uh, one up here, and uh, I didn't touch on this. Uh, this is your um, slot for plans. And uh, you're gonna need a plan for your uh, chisel. And there's a list of plans on the wiki that currently exist. Keep in mind though, it's beta and there's probably going to be some more coming out in the future. Um, to use your scribing table, you're going to need an ink sack. So let's get ourselves an ink sack, and just one should work. Place it in a regular old crafting table and you'll get 16 markings per ink sack. Sweet. Um, one of the other items you're going to need, of course, is a piece of paper. And that's why I got my reeds earlier, which uh, I forget what I did with them. Oh, there's uh, two. Get one more here and craft myself up some paper. And all you gotta do is uh, pretty much write down on your paper by placing one piece of paper in the top slot here and laying out the format for what you wanna do. And uh, straight up and down here with your markings will get you a chisel head. And there's a handful of other markings as well. There's a pickaxe head, there's a shovel head and a hoe head and a bunch of different items, um, hammer head, uh, sword blade, and a uh, bunch of different stuff you can get with it. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and make the chisel head. Uh, you might also notice that swords, uh, like the iron sword here, uh, the recipe for them um, is a little bit pretty much similar. Um, but you might need some uh, steel sword blade heads on top of your sticks rather than just using the old ingot recipes. So good to know there. To craft this guy up, you just open up your interface here and place down a chisel head plan in the chisel slot. You're still going to need your stone hammer there, and you're also going to need some limestone. Uh, limestone acts as a flux, and the only flux that exists in the game as of this time is limestone cobble, um, but I think there's some more coming in the future. I'm just going to need one for the moment, but limestone cobble, the flux, needs to go in this bottom right slot here. And then the last component of this, of course, is your tin ingot. Uh, but it needs to be hot again. You can't just go ahead and uh, start working on cold metal. That's not going to work. So let's get our fire going with some hickory again. And cook it up. So just place your tin ingot in the top slot here and it's going to start to warm up. But you don't want to melt it all the way down to the metal stage, otherwise you might have to rework it in the anvil. So I'm just going to get it up to the brilliant hot stage and then remove it from the fire. Okay, got it up to white, and then uh, I'm going to get up to brilliant white, there we go, and go ahead and place it on my anvil. And you can see that it's a little bit harder to do, and one of the last three items here has to be a um, punch. So one of the last three has to be the punch icon. Not all last three, but one of the last three. And you can see my tin ingot, while I was explaining that, already cooled down to yellow. So let's heat it back up. And uh, I'll be back when I'm ready to start working on this thing. 
So just like in real life, you might need to transfer your ingot back and forth to the fire a few times before you get this to the point where you want it. But I'm going to go ahead and bend this, and the buttons that are higher up are going to move the green bar further. And one of the last three needs to be a punch. So it looks like I got lucky there and uh, managed to get my tin chisel head right away. You might need to go back and forth with the hits and the punches and whatnot. But now that I've got my tin chisel head, and you'll notice that I didn't lose my plan. That's cool. And I also didn't lose my limestone cobblestone, so that's also cool. And now I can place my tin chisel head on top of a stick and get myself a tin chisel. Awesome. Now there's one more item I want to show you here before I wrap up this mod spotlight, and it's not the last one to show. Like I said, there'll probably be a part two coming up in the near future. Um, I can use my tin chisels here, um, and I'm going to go ahead and use it on some of the nice cobblestone that I got, and that will create me a nice brick. It's going to use a bit of durability here. I'm going to get myself a good amount of these. Let's go ahead and just get all 40. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and craft something up with my nice bricks. Now, I'm also going to need charcoal for the next piece and the nice item I want to show you, and I went and gave it to myself with NEI because my charcoal pit isn't quite done yet. Um, in order to work with what's called a bloomery, you're going to need some of these stone bricks, and I've got one sitting right there, but I'm going to go ahead and craft another one for you guys to see. Um, simply lay down a 3x3 three three of any type of stone brick, and above that, you're going to want to do another 3x3. Three three. Get out of there, buddy of um, similar design, but leave the middle part out. And one more stack higher, again, leaving the middle part out. Choose one of the faces of this bloomery and mine out the middle piece, like so. Cool. And uh, get over here, Buster. Thank you, Magnet Mode. Now, take eight of your bricks. Craft it like you would craft an old-fashioned furnace from vanilla Minecraft, but throw a piece of charcoal in the middle, and you get the bloomery block. Place that in the slot right there. And now your bloomery is ready to use. Cool. The interface here shows you the current type of metal that you're smelting, and the type of ore that you're being worked on, and the amount of ore and coal inside the bloomery. This is basically can be considered like an upgraded form of the fire pit used specifically for smelting metals. The way to get metals in here is to go ahead and get on top and just drop them right in the top. Uh, you can only use charcoal and coke. Yep, charcoal and coke. Uh, you cannot use coal or lumber in the bloomery, so you have to get it nice and hot using charcoal. And to do this, just throw a piece in the middle here. Ta-da! And you'll note that as soon as I threw the piece in the middle, this block lit up, and we've got some heat building up. Um, but we don't have any excess coal in there. It's just using that one piece for the initial bit. And I can throw a couple more pieces of coal in there, and you can see some uh, buildup in there of some liquid. Cool. And you can see some excess coal being listed in the um, interface here. Awesome. Now I can throw my cassiterite in there. Remember the tin ore. And I'm going to throw one, two, three, four in there. And if I keep throwing more in, eventually it's going to fill up. Um, and uh, I just threw a bunch in, and now I can't throw any more. But if I were to take more of these bricks, so let's get some more of those bricks. If I got more nice bricks, um, I could throw more in. Um, I just waited a little bit longer than I probably should have. And you can see that now there's a bunch of ore inside this stack. And I want to make sure it's daytime so no monsters attack me in the middle of this spotlight. And uh, it tells you the type of ore that you're smelting down into its metal form. And you can see 25 kilograms of ore. So I threw a bunch of cassiterite in there. Um, now we're going to have to craft an item, but you can see how quickly it burned it all up. So once it cooked up all that ore, it quickly turned into the liquid version. But uh, it didn't give you the liquid version, did it? Nope. So you can cook things a lot faster with this uh, little furnace machine here, but you cannot get your liquid without a little bit of a cost. Now, as I was saying a minute ago, before I stopped to uh, show you guys how this worked, you can expand the size of your bloomery by just adding on to it. And when you do that, you can throw more cassiterite in there at a time. And of course, any other type of, uh, you know, ores that you find in the world it doesn't have to be cassiterite. 
um, but you want to keep a good layout of um, coal or charcoal, I'm sorry, and ores. And you can build this up to five blocks tall, so you can build a couple more layers than I already did. You can see a good amount of ore getting processed now, more than you were able to fill it up before. Uh, so how do we get the liquid metal out of this machine? Well, we're going to have to craft some mold um, to create a mold. You can see there's two types. There's the clay mold, which is made with clay. And you get four of them. And in order to uh, get the ceramic mold, which you'll need to use, you need to cook your clay molds. So if we were to go over here and uh, throw our clay mold onto the fire with some more hickory, of course, because uh, that's the good hot stuff. It's going to heat up the clay mold into a ceramic mold. So I'll come back in a moment once we get a ceramic mold. There we go, just cooked it up into a ceramic mold. And when we place our ceramic mold in this slot here, you can see it quickly fills up with tin. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, help myself out with some more ceramic molds. Alright, I didn't mean to get that many of them. And just fill them up. So what will happen is uh, you'll note that it keeps telling you that the ore type here is cassiterite. You cannot throw any more ore into the top of this machine until you get all the liquid cassiterite or the liquid tin out of it. Um, and uh, you know it's ready to be harvested when the interface tells you that there's zero kilograms of ore in there. So, uh, and just like the uh, fire pit, you get one ceramic mold full of tin for every two pieces of cassiterite that you threw in there, which uh, I threw a bunch in a minute ago, so that's why I'm getting all this tin out. It's the same amount that you'll get. You're not getting more tin. It's just a matter of uh, how much cassiterite I threw in a moment ago. So let's keep filling it up. And you'll know that you've emptied it out completely, um, number one, when you place a uh, ceramic mold in there and don't get any tin out. But also the top bar up here where it says the type um, will empty out. It'll clear away. So let's see. Wow, I threw a lot of cassiterite in, didn't I? Yes, I did. All right. I'll be back in a minute. All right, let's see how much I can get out of here. There we go. Finally got the last of the tin out. So uh, ceramic mold no longer filling up, and no more cassiterite to pull out. So again, because I threw so much in, I got so much tin out, but that's what I get for demonstrating with large amounts of uh, ore. Alright guys, I explained a lot so far, and uh, there is a bit more to show you guys. That's part of Terra Firma Craft, and like I said, it's only in beta. Uh, only a small portion of what this guy plans to have added is implemented into the game thus far. There's a lot more to come. It's a really cool looking mod. As you can see, it completely changes the way Minecraft works. Um, it was a lot to take in, and I know I explained things a little quickly, but hopefully you guys were able to follow along and see uh, how everything works. Uh, like I said, really a neat mod, and really uh, pretty much for the su survivalist in you. If you felt that Minecraft was a little bit too easy in slots, and uh, a little bit uh, too simple to do certain things, uh, this is definitely the mod for you to expand upon and uh, do more cool things within Minecraft. Like I said, a lot more to come with this mod as well. I'm planning to do a part two of this mod spotlight where I show a few more of the machines that you can build, both in world and in the crafting table. And uh, there's a few more other neat aspects of this mod that I haven't gotten into just yet. I showed you the cave-in system uh, by mistake because I had a cave-in down there, and I can show you how to prevent it as well. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on part one of the Terra Firma Craft mod spotlight. Hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. Definitely swing by the forum post and give this guy a try. Take it easy.